So, I've been reading on the forums, the supporters' forums. You know, the team's coming for a lot of criticism about not being able to hold a lead, not being able to capitalise on a, on a lead. And uh, it's true, it's, it's respected and uh, totally agree. You know, from my point of view as a manager, it's... It's so frustrating to watch watch your team throw away a two goal lead or a, or a goal lead. You know we work on it all week in training, the fundamentals of of how to play at the back, and we seem to do well for about seventy minutes. And then we're just so vulnerable. Those last twenty minutes of of every game, we just seem to be really, really vulnerable. Hopefully today we can put it right. But at the end of the day, I've got to say I think we're a better team now than we were last season, and that's reflected in the table: three wins, five draws. One loss, you know, 14 points. I think that's that's a really good return. I think we've come a long way, a real long way. We're just, we're nearly there. We're nearly firing on all cylinders. You know, I think once we once we get a little bit of luck, go our way for once, then I think you'll see a change in the results. And we pick up the ball early doors with a ball over the top by Stokes. Seemed to be renowned for knocking the ball up over the top, but you know, Riaz is going to deal with that all, all day long. Ward Prowse knocks the ball out to the left hand side to Potsy. Potsy gives it to Filippo. Filippo knocks it inside to Josie. Josie just strolls across the, the centre of the park. It's not a great deal on. There's so many blue shirts. You know, Stoker are so compact. They're a hard team to play against. The ball's fed into Zizoko. Zizoko knocks it into Wardy Prowse. Wardy Prowse turns. He feeds it to Filippo. Filippo turns. He has a shot and it's just saved by the goalkeeper. Fantastic opportunity. Not taken. Walters has the ball for Stoke City. He lobs it yet again high and long. Butlin will take that all day long. And he spots Tank. He feeds it into our tank. He's an absolute legend. He's growing so well. His potential is phenomenal. He feeds it into Suzuko. Suzuko drifts the ball out to Sterling. Sterling has number goal. So he cuts his side. Gives it to Gabs. Gabs gives it to Josie. Josie spots Felipe. Felipe takes one touch. 1-0 West Ham. What a goal. What a bloody goal. Get in there, lads. Fantastic. That was majestic football. That was fantastic football. Barcelona, eat your heart out. That is how you play football. Unbelievable. Great play by Gabs. Great ball by Josie. What a first touch by Filippo. And an absolute diamond finish. 1-0 after 24 minutes. That's the way it stayed for the rest of the half. Going in 1-0 up at half time is just phenomenal. The boys are putting a great shift. As I say, playing against Stoke is such a physical and hard game. And we pick the ball up with Josie. He knocks it back to Zizoko. Can we build on it? Can we capitalise? Zizoko into Sterling. He has nothing on. So many blue shirts. He's turning in, inside. He's cutting outside. He feeds it to Tompkins. Tompkins has got that far forward from right back. He feeds it back to Sterling. Sterling into Wardy Prowse. Still just a blue wall of shirts. He knocks it back to Potsy. Potsy goes forward and he's greeted by the same amount of blue shirts. Ridiculous amount of defenders. He feeds it back into Rears. Rears from centre-back Scott Ford. He gives it to Gabs. Gabs does. He shoots. And a great save by the goalkeeper. And again, we pick the ball up to Zoko. He marauds forward. He spots Sterling. Feeds the ball out to the right-hand side. And again, look at the amount of blue shirts. Sterling goes to the bottom. He tricks him. Cuts back inside. Gets the ball to the edge of the era. Great header by Josie. Falls to Wardy Prowse. Wardy Prowse has a shot. It's, it's blocked. Get, falls to Zoko. He cuts inside. He shoots. And the keeper saves. Unbelievable. The pressure on Stoke is unrelenting. Stoke knocked the ball again over the top to the right-hand side. And a great defensive header there. A great defensive header. Back to Butland. He knocks the ball out to Sterling. A great throw out. He has great vision. He's such a, a brilliant goalkeeper. Feeds it into Gabs. Gabs has the ball. He cuts inside. Gives it to Filippo. Filippo after that goal. What a goal he scored. He knocks it out wide to Josie. Josie's got a great opportunity. Cuts back inside. Gets the cross it. And a great defensive header, I have to say, by Stoke City. But Sissoko picks the ball up. He feeds it out to Tompkins. The pressure's mounted. Tompkins cuts inside. He goes to Sissoko. Sissoko feeds it onto Prowsey. Prowsey has a shot. And again, the Stoke keeper saves it. The pressure on Stoke is unrelenting. The boys just don't seem to be able to capitalise and get that killer second goal. Gabs has the ball in the centre of the park. He feeds it into Rias. Rias is dispossessed. Surely that was a foul. The ref waves play on. Stoke has the ball down the right-hand side with Walters. He's marauding forward. The tank comes towards him. They have too much space. They've got the ball over. Kenwin Jones. No, not again. Not again. 83 minutes gone. And Kenwin Jones with the killer touch. Walters just was given too much time. Chips the ball over. Kenwin Jones. I have to say with a great finish. But that all resulted from Riaz being too far up pitch. 
arguably a foul, dispossessed, utter nightmare. But we pick the ball up with Sterling down the right-hand side. One last throw of the dice. He cuts in, puts the ball over. It's gone too far. Comes to Filippo. He tries a shot. He hits Ward Prowse. Bounces off. Stoke clear the ball. And the referee blows the whistle for full time. I've got to say, Stoke was so lucky. How did they get away with that? We had so many opportunities. We just, again, we failed to be clinical. And the papers actually have it right for once. I'm going to have to praise them and say, not good enough. Damn right it wasn't good enough. We can't keep affording to let in leads slip. We need to build on them. We need to get some momentum going. We need to get to the next level. We need to stake... Take that step up in gear and power on. And as you can see, we have a Capital One Cup game against Manchester United at Old Trafford. And I have rung the changes. Essentially, I'm not too bothered about this cup. I know that may sound really nasty, but I'm, I'm not. I'm Nolan's having a game. Hall's having a game. Benzia's having a game. Bassi's having a game. Suzuko needs a rest. So I've rung the changes. I think we've still got an extremely strong side out there. You know, Eduardo's playing. Reedy's dropping into right back. I've dropped Tompkins for this game. For no particular reason, I just want to rest him. You know, Ward Prowse is continuing. I've rung the changes. We need to do something. And we've got three big games after this. After this, we've got to play Chelsea, Arsenal, and Manchester City. You know, they don't come any bigger than that. So I need to rest the boys. Because that is a run of horrific, horrible games. Chelsea, Arsenal, Man City. Can you predict the results for those three games? Because they will be episode 10. Can you predict those results? So we're at Old Trafford. In the rain again. And the game kicks off. And it's literally United wanting to keep the ball for their own. A fantastic world-class save again by Butland. And United just refused to give up the ball. Refused to give up the ball. And it's not until... Hall comes all the way back from up front. All the way back from up front that he actually gets a foot in to, to stop this. I mean, look at it. Man United are just all over us. Absolutely all over us. Absolutely. And there it is. Look, Hall come all the way back from playing in a forward position to actually cover that. It's fantastic. He marauds down the left-hand side. He feeds it into Wardy Prowse. Wardy Prowse has to cut inside because look at the, the amount of red shirts that have got back. He feeds it into Nolan. Nolan knocks it into Eduardo. Eduardo gives it into to Reed. Reed goes forward. He knocks it into Nolan. Great football. He knocks it into Benzia. Benzia cuts inside. He's got an opportunity to shoot. He pops the trigger. It hits the post. And we can't get the follow-up. And surely that was a penalty. What part of the ball did he get, referee? Jesus Christ, man. Ridiculous referee and decisions again. Who has the ball on the right-hand side? Left-hand side, sorry. It's a nice little bit of chicory. He feeds it into Bassi. Bassi has a shot. And that was absolutely pointless. And we go in at half-time with a score nil-nil. We, we weathered the storm by Man United. And we were the better team, but we just couldn't find the finishing touch. The young lads are doing extremely well. But Man United come out, showing their dominance, keeping the ball really well. Nani has it on the left-hand side. He knocks it into Butner. Butner with an, a, a, a fantastic first touch. And the throw-in comes to West Ham. Reedy's got the ball. As you see him putting it back on possession. Reedy throws it into knockout. Made some changes at half-time. A few of the lads picked up some niggles. And United come forward. Great defensive header, but it's followed up a lucky ricochet. And Butland doesn't come and get the ball. It doesn't claim it. The ball's fell into Rooney. And 51 minutes are gone. And Manchester United take the lead. Just typical. Butner. Oh, just typical. Butland didn't take the ball. You know, we've dominated United for a good period of 10, 12 minutes. We haven't been able to capitalise. Had some good opportunities. And in typical United fashion, they break, they score. And again, United have the ball in the forward area. They knock it through, it, it, a long ball through on the floor. Reedy cl clears it quite easily. That's, that's bread and butter for him all day long. Eduardo picks up the ball in the centre of the park. He beats it into Benzia. Benzia strolls forward. He's playing really well. He's really putting in a good shift. Not much on for him, though. You know, United are closing down so well. They're, they're closing the space down. They're closing the players down. Bassi has the ball. He feeds it into Wardy Prowse. Wardy Prowse pulls the trigger. A great save by the goalkeeper. And United, again, are able to clear the ball. And they seem to be trying to catch us on the counter-attack. But we've got good numbers back this time. But we're caught out in the right-back position. Nani breaks through. Puts the ball into Hernandez. Hernandez with a fantastic turn. 
And the writing's on the wall. 2-0 Manchester United after 69 minutes. I've got to say, hold my hands up, 100%. That turn by Javier Hernandez on the edge of the box is world class. Look at that. Completely and utterly sells our centre-back, a kipper. And uh, they take the lead 2-0. Corner comes in for United. Fantastic goal line clearance there by Bassi of all people. Unbelievable. And United retain possession. It just seems like the ball is meant for Manchester United. So frustrating playing at Old Trafford. The referee's on their side half the time. They break into our box. And we're just all over the place. And it's a simple finish for their left back of all people. Butler in the 84th minute to make it 3 0. Really disappointing. If we'd scored in the first half, I think it would have been a totally different game, but we didn't, unfortunately, and that's the way the game finished. 3-0 to Manchester United. At least it's not a draw, so that's one plus point. We're out of the competition. I think that's another plus point. We can now really concentrate on the Premier League and the FA Cup. I've got to say, the boys put in a fantastic shift. None of those boys should be downhearted, disheartened, upset. Yes, they lost, so they should be upset, I suppose. But they shouldn't be disheartened because they put in a great shift. You know, those young lads are fantastic. Ward Prowse has come on so much. He's, he is getting better and better and better. Filippo is getting better and better and better. Benzia had an opportunity. He played extremely well. Bassi had, had an opportunity. Or Bassi had an opportunity. He let me down a little bit. I was quite disappointed by his performance. But he's still only a young lad. He's only 17. Eduardo, 16 years old in the centre of the park for us. Against a strong Manchester United team. You know... We've got two young lads, 18 and 16 years old, in the centre of the park, going up against the likes of Fletcher, Nani, etc. The boys should be bloody proud of what they've done. They put in a good shift. We just weren't good enough on the day, and that's a real disappointment. But nonetheless, we'll move on, and we'll move on into an extremely hard section. As I say, our next three games are an absolute killer. An absolute killer. But I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be interesting, and... Um, we do something quite str well, not strange, like we did with the Reading game. As you know, at half time in the Reading game, or after the first goal, or I think it was half time in the Reading game, we've done a, a predict the predict the score. Well, this one's a little bit different. Predict the results against Chelsea, Arsenal, and Man City. Episode ten will contain those three games, so it'll be a long episode. And uh, whoever gets the re results correct, which will also mean they'll get the how many points we get correct, I will give that person. Or if it's a couple of people, I'll oh, basically I've got two hundred thousand coins. I'm going to distribute two hundred thousand coins between however many people predict those three results. So if one person gets it, I'll give you two hundred thousand coins. If three of you get it, I'll split the coinage. So yeah, it's, it's something different. I think it's it'll be quite a good laugh to see if you guys can predict it. Predict the results against Chelsea, Arsenal, and Man, C Man City. All Premier League games. That's a tough run for any team. And in our current form, that's a tough run. Can we sneak nine points? Can we win each game? Or will we lose each game? Or will we win, draw, lose? Or draw, win, lose? Who knows? Anyway, episode 10 will be out on the November the 14th. I believe that's a Wednesday. So, uh, obviously, as soon as that is that is up and live, any um, comments on uh, episode 9 regarding the scores will, won't be counted. And, uh, yeah, have fun. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. And I'm sorry we dropped points. Oh, 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 oh,